kind of throwing something out about this off air. And so I have a couple of different historical points that say like why they favor one team or another. And this is, I wanted to see what you thought about this fact, and then I might spin it around on you. All right. If you use MVP as who's the best player in a particular series, since the turn of the century, players who finished higher in the MVP voting, so that would be Luca, are only 12 and 11 in the finals. But then if you take a step back and you're like, that's great. But remember, Barkley won the MVP over Jordan. And like, there's plenty of other cases like that. Malone over Jordan. Exactly. So, so were they the better player? I don't think anybody would say that. So if you just go back at the better player theory, I've been reading this a couple of different places. People have speculated any between 48 and 56 of the 68 champions had the better player. All right, so like a really high percentage. Some of that is subjective. I right, understand. Because I guess I would say this. I, I hate saying this, but LeBron was the better player in eleven over Dirk, right? I I say yes, but then you can be like, but how did they play in that particular series? Right, but so I definitely agree. Yeah. LeBron in two thousand eleven. If you're just like going off of that, you're saying was the better player. So that's one of but the Dirk times. But Dirk did play better exactly. than LeBron exactly. in the NBA Finals. And so you have the better player going into this series. Like, I I don't think anybody's going to dispute that, but that that usually means there's an overwhelming likelihood that you will win the series. Yeah. But then I'll give you this. On okay. That, because there's a couple of different things that have you ebb and flow in different ways. Only eight teams have ever made it to the finals with a better overall record than Boston. Boston is the entire season, playoffs and regular season. 76 and 20. Seven of those eight teams won the championship. The only one that didn't, of course, was the very famous Golden State Warriors team that won all the games and didn't win. Also, no number five seed has ever won the championship. Yeah. Now, I realize 67 it's games one time and didn't even make it out of the first round. That is that is very true. After starting off 0 and 4. It was 2006, 2007 season right there. Yeah. Yeah. They which, went 67 yeah. and 15, and but they were 0 and 4, 4 and then they went 16 and 11 and just went scorched earth on the NBA and then nothing. Well, then sense. I thought it was a great move. I thought we were like, "You know what? Let's put Devin George at center. This should work out." <laughs> I don't think you mean that whatsoever. To the Mavs. They're the first team since 2010, the Lakers, to beat three 50-plus win teams on the way to the finals. Clippers, 51 wins. Thunder, 57. Timberwolves, 56. What happened with that Lakers team? They also beat the Boston Celtics in the championship. Ooh, face Boston. So I kind of like... Boston sucks, dude. That <laughs> I kind of like that president. I'm, I don't know if I'm prepared to go that far, but I do think this Scared. is a far more competitive series than like the betting odds would lead you to believe. I, I'm with you. I think it should be about a coin flip. I get giving Boston a little bit of an edge. I, I get it. They're the one seed. You just went over a lot of reasons why they could have the edge here and why they've been overall the better team for 82 games and in the playoffs based off of their record in the playoffs. But I just look at what the Mavericks had to go through. Also, the Mavericks, in a way, I will not say they had adversity in the Western Conference Finals. After winning game two, uh, it kind of was, hey, it's in your favor. You got to kind of screw this up to lose four out of five here. And obviously they didn't. But the Celtics have literally gone through no adversity for over a month. Jimmy Butler out and done so then you're playing of super compromise i understand they won the eastern conference last year a super compromised team in the first round and then just going to the conference finals i'm forgetting who did they play it was really easy for them in the was it philadelphia i don't remember but then they played indiana and then tyrese halberton you know literally whizzed down his pants with 25 seconds to go to blow game one then he got hurt so then that was over. Then that series was completely over as a competitive series. Uh, I don't think they played New York, right? Was it New York or Cleveland? Oh, Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell yeah. quits. Yeah. And they had some other injuries too, besides Donovan Mitchell going, I'm hurt again. When Jared Allen was out. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I look at Boston. Hey, congratulations. They made their way easily to the Eastern Conference Finals. I hope I don't have to eat my words here. 
but I just think that this will be the first major competition they have to face in the playoffs, which has happened throughout our lifetime. Ever since Jordan hit the shot, which we might be getting to yep. right here, ever since Jordan hit the shot over Byron Russell, the Eastern Conference has sucked. Yeah. The you know, <laughs> them not having to go through that might be it could be beneficial because maybe physically they didn't have the same wear and tear that Lucas had to go through. But I always, Kevin, I'm a big believer in hanging your hat on things and that's why i'm always like give me the best teams let me beat the best teams along the way because i start believing that i'm better than everybody because of it and i can hang my hat on i just did that against that team dude and that team's nothing this team's nothing compared to those guys or i just you know we know that we can get over this one hump we know we can make this last play happen we know that this guy can do this because we learned it while we were going through the series. Now, to go along with all of this, as long as we're talking about the historical context of some of these NBA finals, I want to take out 2011. 2011 is the obvious. What's your favorite NBA finals ever? I get yeah. it. It, it, it. And 2006 is the worst. Yes. Agreed, agreed. If you take out 2011, what's your favorite NBA finals of all time? I know we're going back just a little bit, but we got audience members of all ages. Could it be this one? 10 seconds in overtime, Worthy, stolen by Emil Cobb. And the Boston Celtics have opened up a five-point lead. The 84 Boston Celtics over the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, obviously, they played three NBA Finals in the span of four years. That was the one that Boston won. Boston people will argue that if you would have gotten them again in 86, you definitely would have beaten that Lakers team. But guess what? Didn't happen. So... That one, I, I didn't see like as it was going on in real time. Why? So I'm, I'm not, <laughs> because I was three, four. And Excuses. I know, fair. Was that, the, was that the one that like, it just seemed like an all out brawl every every game where those dudes just you know, Oh, they each built other up and... to it and they seemed to hate each other more okay. and more. But the Celtics were inclined to get involved in such matchups as you saw with I the Pistons as well. I believe that is the year that they clotheslined uh, Kurt Rambis. Yes. But, um, that put the NBA on the national map. If you're too young, I get it. We're pretty much too young, too, for that, too. But if you just follow the history of the NBA in 1984, NBC, ABC, CBS, obviously there was no Fox. They didn't even want the NBA finals. They're like, it's a load of crap that nobody watches. By 84, Boston and L.A., Magic and Larry changed that. And the NBA finally gained, re gained relevance as a really major sport in our country. And it exploded somewhat from there. So the and people were dying to see it, Mike, because ever since the college championship game, they're like, oh, we'll get it soon. And then the Lakers would win and the Celtics would win. Right. And the Lakers, but you never got them against one another. And then this game went seven, this series went seven games. It was incredible. So USA Today has a list out and that one is number four on the okay. list and that's so i wanted to bring that one up seven that, game series that also game seven went into overtime number four so reggie wow. that take or that look leads me to believe that you think that is too low yes i also haven't considered all of them i'm willing to leave open that there are some ones that i'm forgetting but that feels that feels low and i don't think i think that was game four that went to overtime. Is that four? Okay. I, I do not believe game seven went to overtime. That was game four. I'm bugging. Kevin, it was the year of 1969, I believe. Oh, my nice. Where I got out of bed. And you were not the Boston alive. Celtics you don't know the that. Lakers. What? Yeah, you don't know that I wasn't alive. I guess I wasn't Actually, alive either. So. I wasn't alive for that what? one, so I can't remember it. But I, the first time I ever paid attention to the NBA Finals was 93. That was, the, that was Michael Jordan against Charles Barkley, I believe. Yes. And that was... Like, I remember Danny Ainge in, the, in the, the conference finals, like, going crazy after where they won and everything. And I was like, man, this is going to be a really good matchup. Like, I was very excited about it. That is number five on the list, okay. by the way. So, that, so. That was, that's, where, that's the first time I ever, like, watched the NBA playoffs was in 1993. I, other, before that, it was kind of on For my radar. For me, it radar. was 85. Okay. Like, just to give you relevance on when I really became, like, relevant and really watching it was, was 85. And that was... Uh, the rematch of Lakers Celtics and the Lakers won that one. And then yeah. my it, dad actually bought me a Los Angeles Lakers hat. I can't believe he did that. And I can't believe I wore that for a little oh. bit in my life as a little kid. Cause I loved magic Johnson. Uh, I loved watching the Lakers. The Mavericks were my team. 
Uh, but then I quickly realized in 1988 how much I hated the Lakers and will hate them the rest of my life. Have you seen Magic Johnson's tweet, by the way, where he quote tweeted himself uh, awesome. about the Mavericks? And he said, it was, the, it was in March, Kevin. He said, I want to put the Western Conference on notice. The Dallas Mavericks coached under HOF Jason Kidd are a different team with new additions of Washington, Lively, and Gafford. Watch out for them in the playoffs. And then he quote tweeted it 13 hours ago. Remember when I said the Mavs were a scary team in the West? <laughs> well, look at where they are now. Because mm. that is all you get from Magic Johnson's Twitter account. Facts. Fire a pit. Well, yeah, facts. That's, a, that's but a literally facts. I appreciate yeah. that facts. better than if he would have put that tweet out originally today. <laughs> like if that was the original, original basis of it. So I, I do, I do appreciate that. By the way, for people that are asking the, I know we said you can't say this one. But the 2011 Mavs over Heat series was ranked number 13 okay. of all time by USA Today. I understand. It definitely followed a lot because of the beginning of the Heat. And they're yes. not one, not two. And then they lost that one. And everybody besides Miami Heat fans and maybe LeBron fans were on the Mavs side around the world. Yeah. Because everybody was so upset with the way it looked like. And now the NBA is pretty consistently somewhat doing kind of that. But... That was the first where there was a, a true and utter hate from a lot of organizations to one organization. Now, Mike, I want to get your favorite, but first, mm. I've told you we you guys got four and five. I want to know what if you think you can guess the top three NBA Finals of all time per USA Today. I feel like one of them's got to be that Cleveland Golden State. Yeah, I think so. Twenty sixteen. Oh, the hit the audio. Comeback. Irving and Curry, one-on-one, -on -one. Irving puts it up, it's good, Kyrie Irving from downtown, and the Cavaliers by three. On your face. I, I know people talk about. We have that guy on our team now, so we can say that. Mm -hmm. Fair and point. And we owned we uh, Alex's face again. Like, our city did it, because he was underneath the basket all exactly. in his $10,000 suit. And Alex Rodriguez, we, we got him in 2010, and now we got him in 24, so... All right. I didn't Alex, think on your face. There is any possible way I would have a transition for this. He verbed that. But did you see the pettiness of Jose Canseco, where on June 1st, he tweeted out Happy Pride Month to Alex Rodriguez? Really? Alex, on your face! Oh, no. That is the level of... Headiness that did he start following you recently? Is it you? Somebody, somebody. No, that, was, that was Medford. Medford. Medford that's I clearly right. don't give the good takes that Jose uh, or Jose Alex? Canseco is Jose. Jose Canseco, Canseco started following Medford because, right, as awesome. Reggie said, he doesn't give hot takes. You, do you give Magic Johnson type takes on Twitter? No, nah, not really. Okay. Somebody said Bulls Jazz has to be number one. I mean, I didn't make the list, but in this case, false. It was in fact. Cavs Warriors from 2016 and I don't think mm. it's recency bias because you think about it was eight years ago because of that yeah I and, and well yes that's still okay <laughs> you know what fair I will concede that point but coming back from the three to one deficit the historic nature of that Golden State Warriors team do they close it out in five if not for the Draymond suspension the LeBron block that Kyrie three that series Rule. Yeah, and then, like, yeah, you, did you just mention Draymond the ball kick? Oh, yeah. Really plural, because he didn't get just one of them. Like, that changed everything. They were going to win that series. They were up 3-1, yes. and then he's like, let me kick him in the And then he sack. got suspension. And then that, that led to it getting to seven games, and then they – Curry didn't have a good game seven. I think he was a little bit dinged up and hurt. From uh, Matthew Delvadova leaning on him all series. And then, yeah, and then uh, it was interesting because going into this one now, the guy who they gave the ball to to win the game was Kyrie Irving. And, and look, I'm not knocking LeBron. LeBron's arguably the greatest player of all time. But like, it, it was Kyrie who offensively won the game. Defensively, LeBron has the big block. LeBron played some great defense. LeBron had great offensive plays too, but it was Kyrie down the stretch offensively. Now, the rest of, do you care to take a guess at two or three? Well, did, when you said 1969, was that like a nice. seven-game series between L.A. and yeah. Boston? And, yes. and was that was that Bill Russell? or Bill Chamberlain, I yeah, think, Yeah, so that, that probably, did you name That is that number six on okay. the list. And by the way, 
Jerry West, right. Elgin Baylor. I, I don't know about this because unfortunately he was compromised, but it was historic in game six is Detroit and L.A. in uh, 1988. Oh, man. Because that went seven games. Yeah, and, I, and, and Isaiah came Thomas down will to, tell you. Yeah, Isaiah was limping around. He wasn't and, on the dream team. <laughs> and it went seven games. So I just, 1988 was a pretty that good That is number one. eight on okay. the list. The rest of the top three, the somebody he said number one has to be Bulls Jazz. It was not. But 98 Bulls Jazz with the Jordan shot, that is second and you said, on the list. You said the Mavs winning over Miami was not. No. You said 13 okay. or 13, 13 yeah. I believe. 2013, it's the Miami Heat over the San Antonio Spurs. I feel I like I hated both of this those teams is too and... high, but obviously that's the Ray Allen shot. The Ray Allen shot makes series. it different. I remember it as the Greg Popovich, as I am shocked, as I am actually rooting for the San Antonio Spurs, and he takes out Tim Duncan. And I'm like, he's not a defensive liability. Are you kidding me? And then they got the offensive rebound. I think it was Chris Bosh. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it was because he was rebounding against five foot three people at the it time. Was <laughs> and he kicked it to Ray Allen. And if you would have just had Tim Duncan in the game guarding Chris Bosh, Tim Duncan gets the rebound and the Heat don't get that title. He, he learns his lesson, though, because they won the next year, right? I think so. I think they won in 14. So because it was the every other year the kind of thing, they were very much Bochy like. They didn't they, win or 14. They couldn't win. Okay, yeah. They won go. it back-to-back So it was their revenge Oh, year. oh, the Spurs. The Spurs, I, yeah, I never, never won yeah, back-to-back. Yeah.